Hello, nice to see you again. Welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at this spring scene, this way of doing trees with uh, loose watercolours to start with, then working back into it with a bit of sponging and getting into the detail. No drawing on this one at all to start with, so good fun. Uh, don't forget you can download the uh, instruction sheet. It's maybe an autumn one rather than the spring one to give you some different colours. Um, by clicking onto the cards shown below and also just logging onto the Art Julie website. That will also give you lots of other tutorials and other inspiration for more paintings. Right, let's get on. So I've got my watercolour paper here. This is Bockingford uh, 425 ground. I like the heavier weight paper. It's got to be watercolour paper for this to work properly. So we're not going to do any drawing, just be aware that you want to have trees at the top here and we're going to build up to, to put some um, background bushes and shrubs about a third of the way up from the bottom. So that about a third of the way up from the bottom we're going to um, have a little bit of darker and a bit of surrounding there. No drawing to start with. So I'm just going to mix up some colours now to start with. I'm going to use a little bit of cerulean blue. If I find my brush, there it is. So I'm going to mix up some separate puddles of these, a little bit of cerulean blue for the sky, not too strong with that one. Clean the brush and then I'm going to put in some little bit of pale yellow. This could be a little bit of weak cadmium yellow. Um, don't get too hung up on different colours. Um, if you want to use different shades, you can use um, varying different makes, just um, slightly different shades of yellow. All the colours of spring we're, we're looking at for this. A little bit of a paler yellow there and then I'm going to look at the, the shrubs in the background. We're going to get some darker yellows, sorry, darker greens. We're going to have a little bit of ultramarine blue and a, a little bit of the cadmium yellow which will give me one green. That will give me quite a, a strong green there. And then we're going to make a um, Prussian blue or thallo blue and a bit of burnt sienna. Let's just move that over to this little palette here and burnt sienna. So that will give me a very strong dark bottle green, which will be very useful for putting in some of the background shrubs to give me a strong. I'd normally test this first, so I'm just going to use this little handout sheet and I'm just going to put a little bit of a colour on there. Not quite green enough, so I'm going to put a little bit more burnt sienna into that to give it a stronger colour that gradually goes into a, a bottle green colour. That's nice and strong and dark. There we go. Something like that. I'll put that to one side. And then just a little bit of a hint of burnt sienna on its own just to give me a little pathway coming into the foreground here. Keep that quite weak as well. So once I've got those mixed up, um, I'm going to wet the paper all over. I'm going to use a mop brush, a nice soft mop brush, clean water. And we're going to wet the paper all over so it stays glossy wet. Even though you're wetting the paper all over, it doesn't mean to say you've got to put the paint everywhere. You can leave some areas to go back to being white, which will give you a nice light glow in various places. So you don't have to leave them without water on. It can just Put that all over so it stays glossy wet with a good strong Bockingford 425 paper. You don't need to stretch it first. It does cockle slightly, but it's, it'll stay wetter longer and it doesn't move too much. Just, and now it's staying glossy wet. We're just going to go in with the, the colours we've got. A little bit of blue at the top here for a hint of the sky showing through in between the trees. We only want it in patches. Leave some areas white, leave some areas without paint on so that you've got little clouds and things coming through. It doesn't matter where you take that, you can take it off the paper a little bit if you want to. Clean my brush. I'm now going to go into some of these nice pale yellows, these golden yellows, to put this glow into the background here. Just wiggle your brush around to give you this um, change of light in here. Perhaps a little bit here where we're going to have some background trees perhaps coming up into that. I'm going to put a swish or two down the bottom here as well. Make it. I was trying to curve it up a bit to give it a, a smiley face down there. Into this 
it should be lemon yellow but it's gone a little bit green so that's uh, another colour to put in here but it doesn't matter what shade that is it just gives you a bit more variation in your colours there and now I'm going to go into the greeny colours starting to build up some of this background shrubs this is just a hint of the shrubs here I'd stop it about a third of the way down and these are just naturally going to creep around this area and will look like a hint of shrubs again just drag through a couple of little bands of that into the foreground to give you the um, effect of banks of um, grasses and shrubs and things into the foreground before I get too carried away and forget to put a little bit of a path in this little bit of weak but sienna colour we'll just have a little hint of that coming into the foreground here it's wider as it comes forward just a little bit of colour there um, and then we're just going to put in some of the stronger darker green just in front of that previous bank of greens that I've put in there just dot it in and again this will end up being a little shrub or a little patch of dark green into the foreground here just to give you a little suggestion of some of the trees and things that we've got here perhaps we'll get that varying in height a little so again I'm just squiggling the brush around try not to take the brush off the paper too much I'm just thinking shrub shapes as I'm working um, just to give me varying bits of patches of shrubbery that could be in there that's a little bit higher as well on that side that would probably do for that part and then I'm just going to put a little bank or two into the foreground here to change the um, foreground a little. We can work back into these a little bit later on, but it'll just draw the eye in, leave some patches going back to being light again. I've now got to let it dry before we can work on, to, on top of that. So just make sure there's no puddles sitting around the edges. Again, just go around the edges with a bit of tissue or kitchen roll just and then I'm just going to leave it to dry so let, let it settle out and let it dry right to speed this up for the drying you can just use a hair dryer just to dry it out a bit at this stage okay so now that's all nice and dry we can start to put the leaves on some of the trees at here. I'm going to use a sponge for this. This is a natural sponge. Uh, there is an art to sponging and a lot of people don't get on with spongings, but it's probably because you've got the wrong sort of sponge. You want, you're looking for a bit of sponge with a bit of texture to it, a bit of feathery texture. Uh, this one's one of my favourite pieces. And what you have to do with your sponge is wet it, work it so it's not all dry and hard. So I've just popped it into the water and I'm just squeezing it and it'll go all fluffy and bouncy. You then squeeze as much water out as possible, squeeze it again, and I even dry it on a bit of kitchen roll so it's, it's now all fluffy and bouncy. So that's got lovely feathery texture to it, so that's um, going to be really nice with this work here. I've already mixed a little bit of extra paint up, so the same sort of colours again, these yellowy colours, these greeny colours, and we're just going to dip it into the paint starting with your palest colours first and you're just going to lightly put on a few leaves on the trees here. So just in various places we'll put a little bit of this greeny one. This is the lemon yellow with a grubby, grubby brew brush mixed into it which has given me a pale green colour. Um, and then we're going to straight into a bit of a yellowy one. And that'll give me some nice spring yellowy trees. As you're sponging Turn your sponge around. I just noticed then as I was doing that, I was getting matching paw prints. Occasionally turn your sponge around and do them in a slightly different position so they don't match. Get the boughs, leave this bit of space up here, but get the boughs to touch each other occasionally. Give yourself some gaps. Don't go too mad with it. You want to have a little bit on here, but not completely cover it. You need to leave some gaps to put some twigs and things in there. I'm going to go into another green now. This is my ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow and just put a little bit of green in there. Again, just make that a little stronger 
down here, perhaps a little bit more up there. It's already looking quite forest like. Don't keep working it with a sponge, otherwise that flattens all the texture out. Sometimes you have to stop, let it dry out, and then come back and do a little bit more. But that'll probably be enough for those trees there. Um, so I wouldn't keep working into that area. It does tend to flatten it out. Perhaps a little bit of my darker green just towards the bottom here to give me a little bit more of a shrub or bush into that foreground. And we will do a little bit more work on the foreground with a bit more sponging in a moment, but we're just starting to get a little bit of the bushes and, and um, a little bit of the... Um, it's not foreground, it's mid-ground, that's what I'm trying to say there. And I'm just going to leave that for the moment. The next thing I'm going to do now is start to work on the branches. So I'm going to leave that sponge because I'm going to use it again in a moment. Smaller brush now, a small round. I'm just going to mix up um, an ultramarine blue and burnt umber mix to give me a, a browny grey colour. So a bit of ultramarine blue and a bit of burnt umber. Plenty of burnt umber into that and it'll turn it into a browny grey, which are quite useful for these tree trunks. So just pausing for a minute anyway to let that dry. There we go, so we've got to mix up a nice browny grey colour. And we're going to work with some of these trees, and we're going to put a little bit of this tree coming up. In some places you can go over the sponging, and then as you come up through the tree, you're going to go in between your sponging. So we'll start here somewhere um, and we'll put in this main tree. I'm just going to bring it in between some of the sponging down here at the bottom. So it looks like the shrubs are coming over the top of it. So just tickle your brush onto the paper there. As you come up, the tree will start to branch out and we can start to bring it in between some of the sponging as it comes up. The, the paper. Just make that trunk a little wider. Perhaps we'll have another branch coming up here. Just letting it split in between. Now as it comes up into the light here, we're going to stop um, putting the branch in where there's a bit of sponging going across. And then we'll split it again. Perhaps bring it out in between some of the other bits of sponging. It's just see putting in the little gaps. That's why it was quite important to leave some little gaps in there. So this should start to look like the branches coming across the tree trunk here. I'll probably just stop at that one just at the moment and do a similar one or two over this side. So it's nice to have one or two main ones coming out of these shrubs here. There's a nice little gap here, so I'm going to just bring one out here and just bring it up. As it starts to get in between the sponging here, I'll stop and make it break into some of these areas. What it would be useful to do is every now and again you have to stand back from this picture, actually get up, move away from it, so you can see that the how the branches are running through the, the picture here. You might find that it needs to be thicker at the bottom, that you give you a better tree trunk at the bottom if you make it wider, perhaps a branch to split off a bit earlier or change it slightly as you're going up here to so just look at the direction of those and where they're going to at the top. That's given me a couple of little trees. It's always nice to have three main ones. Three and odd numbers are always good and just slightly change the direction. So there's a bit of the gap in the sponging there. So we'll just have that coming out of that and then coming up a little way. I've gone over the sponging on that part just to give it a little bit more realism and then it can go in between some sponging and then as it comes up here it can overlap that one there's a nice gap and it can start going into the background at the top here and again there's a nice space for a branch to come through here this gradually builds up perhaps we'll give that one got no leaves on that bit so let's break that a little bit lower and make it go lower down. This is all very fine for the big ones but we actually want to put some finer branches into here. 
So I'm just going to make this wash a little bit weaker, so I'm just putting a bit of water to it. And as it comes up the tree, you want to just make these branches finer, thinner and weaker in colour. You don't want them too heavy and dark at the top. So just the tip of your brush coming in here, just to give you some little twigs and branches coming out in between your sponging, just to give you a few little bits coming through here. So you can see how quickly the trees grow into the background. You also need a few little background ones in here. So again, with this weaker mix now, you can put a few, again, just where it's coming in and out of the sponging or over it in the lower parts. We just put a few extra little weaker branches into the background there. This can just carry on to your heart's content. Again, just every now and again, stand up, walk away from it, have a look just to see where these branches are going to, that they're not just making sure they're flowing through and not stopping and starting, coming up here and then the branch at the top moves over. You want to make sure it flows through. I'll have a little weak tree coming up here. Perhaps the branch or two coming from the sides. Into there. That's a little weak one up there somewhere. Gives it a bit more depth. So that's probably about it for the for the trees and the branches. It's probably enough. You can put more on if you want to, but I think that for me that's enough on there. So let's start looking at a little bit of the foreground around here. So we want to just give this a bit more depth, a bit more interest into the foreground. So I'm going back to my dark bit of sponging here. And I just want to make this look a little bit more realistic around this area. So I'm just going to re-sponge that. You could use a little bit darker mix, ultramarine blue and burnt umber a bit stronger, or I'm just sticking to the, the Prussian blue at this one. And then I'm going to go straight into this while it's still wet with the same colour. And this time I'm just going to wiggle the bottom edge. I'm going to do some vertical zigzags down here, just in some places. And this should look like the leaves coming up or the grasses coming up below there. And because this is still wet, it'll just blur into that background. So it's just giving it some little bit of interest into the foreground, seating it down. Same on this side. Just re-sponge this bit. So it's giving it a little bit of wet paint to play with. And then as it comes up and down into the bottom here, I'm just going to do bring it down and do some vertical zigzags so it looks like the grass is coming up into that foreground bit. Or from the foreground into the background. So it's how to make this colour work and look like it's sitting into the shrubbery in the foreground. We'll do another little patch perhaps over this side. Again, just bring that across just to give it a little bit more interest over here. Same sort of thing, the same sponge with a little bit of interest, a um, little bit of details onto it. And again, in some places I'll take that colour, because it's still wet, it will blend in. Um, and I'll just put these vertical zigzags into the bottom there and it should look like little grasses coming up into the shrubbery to disappears into the background there. Perhaps just a little patch here. Not so big on this side. A little bit more. And then perhaps a few dots out to look it make it look a little bit more natural. So once we've got those finished, and I think that's probably enough there, we need to just look at the figure or putting some sort of figure and details into this background part here. Just a few dots, a few little flicks up, a few little vertical zigzags into the bottom there to make that part. So we need to put a little figure in here. It just gives you a sense of scale, a sense of size in there. It draws your eye into the middle of this picture. So a little person, um, I'll show you, you might, you might need to practice a little person first of all. Um, I'll show you on this bit of paper how to do a little person. You'd think, some people say carrot shapes, I tend to think more diamond shapes. Just paint a little carrot or long diamond shape. A little blob for the top, don't make that too big otherwise it uh, turns into a big spaceman. Um, 
and then just an arm down and perhaps another arm sticking in the pocket and you've got a little person with a few little dots on the edge there. So that's what we're going to do onto this picture. So using the same dark tones that we've had before, I'm using the, the strongest dark I've got here. You can either use the um, ultramarine blue and burnt umber mix, which is the same colour as the fencing, or just the, the Prussian blue and, and um, burnt umber, which gives you the which gives you the, the uh, darker tone there. So I'll put the little person in. You want the per person to somewhere around the bottom of these shrubs here. Just the feet will be down there, so don't make them too big. And I'm just doing this little diamond shape again. Nice, long, thin shape. Fill it in. Tiny little blob for the head. You can always make the head bigger, but if you make it too big to start with, it doesn't look right. So I'm going to drop an arm down, perhaps put an arm in the pocket. A few little dots along the bottom there. And perhaps we put a little dog on there. A couple of little dashes. Little head looking up at his owner. Little note there. That's don't bother putting the lead in, it's too much. So um, we'll just put a bit of fencing or something again just to give the eye a little lead in. So a few little fence posts. They'll fade away as they go into the background. So just putting the stronger ones in. Again, just let them dot and dash in between the sponging, a little bit of railings coming down there, put another fence post in there perhaps. Um, I'll do the same on this side, just make this a little bit stronger perhaps over here first of all, a little bit of a fence. Again, as soon as it gets to any sponging, stop, and a little bit lower and a little bit weaker, just add a little bit of water to that as it comes further away and have it tilting in just to give me a hint of fence coming into the background. Perhaps just a few little dots to finish that off. And that's it. That's my little spring woodland scene. OK, so there we are, the finished painting. Very simple little painting there, so easy to do with a bit of sponging. Don't forget you can subscribe to Artie Julie channel uh, for more inspirational ideas and just go onto the website to download the instruction sheets. See you again soon.